All right, welcome to Devil's Domain. Today I got a release from Vinegar Syndrome, and you might have seen my other review, and if you haven't, you should check it out, of Psychos in Love by Gorman Beckard. Uh, this is a movie that he made before that, uh, but it came out after this, uh, as far as Vinegar Syndrome releases go. Uh, this is Disconnected from 1984. Uh, it's got a nice little slip cover there, double thick O-ring as they call it. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the directorial debut by Gorman Beckard, uh, and uh, Psy if, if it's anything like Psychos in Love, I anticipate I'm going to love this movie because Psychos in Love is really good, uh, but I did hear that this is tonally different, you know, Psychos in Love is more of like a comedy type of thing, like a romantic comedy with like boobs and blood, uh, but this one is about a girl who's receiving ominous ghastly phone calls, and uh, she believes her boyfriend is sleeping around with her twin sister and she there's a killer on the loose and she ends up meeting a uh some nerdy guy who she thinks might be like somebody that might be better for her than the guy she's with especially since she suspects her boyfriend of cheating on her uh also stars francis Reigns and mark walker carmine copia bianco who was uh i, I hope i said that name right carmine copia bonk <laughs> Fuck it. Anyways, I, he was in Psychos in Love, and uh, he did a pretty good job in that. And uh, Gorman is in this as well, the director. Uh, but this has a commentary track with uh, Gorman and Carmine. It's got uh, dissect, Dissecting Disconnected. with uh, It's an interview with Gorman. Getting Disconnected, an interview with Carmine. Uh, it's got a director introduction. Uh, 20 Questions, a short film by Gorman. Uh, an introduction and Q&A of 20 questions at the 2017 festival screening. And it has a booklet. How about that? Vinegar Syndrome doesn't often put booklets in their releases, but apparently this one has one. And, of course, you get the slip cover, which I'm about to take off here in a second. So let's open it up check it out. All right, there's the uh, closer look at the slip cover of Disconnected, written in uh, cursive blood. Well, not so cursive, but... Uh, and there's some stills of her talking on the phone with a bloody mouth. And there's your synopsis and extras. Cast and director. All region. And from 1984. Runs 84 minutes. Of course you get the same thing on the inside there. But I suspect there will be a reversible cover. I don't hate this cover, but I don't know. Seems like you could do something better. But maybe it's... Maybe after seeing the movie it would make more sense. So... Let's check out that booklet. What we got in here. It's kind of a short one. But it's better than nothing, right? They usually don't do booklets. And of course, there is the reversible cover. Uh, that one's okay, too. I don't know. Actually, I do think I kind of like that that one better. That one's okay. But, uh, I hope this is anywhere near as good as Psychos in Love. And if it is, I should have some good feedback here in just a second. Alright, well, Disconnected, I didn't care for quite as much as I did Psychos in Love. Uh, I wouldn't even say this is like a great movie or anything. Uh, it's definitely an ambitious project uh, with, that was made with very little resources, uh, very little money. Uh, but for a, a debut feature film, you know, I, I think it's pretty good. Uh, it, it's definitely bizarre. It, it has like a lot of components that seem like they're supposed to be leading to something, but they... In the, in the end, they all kind of seem irrelevant. Uh, it's kind of, yeah. So you have Alicia is the main character. And she has a twin sister. Uh, she, The actress, Frances Reigns, plays both parts. Uh, changes her hair, you know, a little bit. Uh, so the, the main character is more of like a, kind of like an average type of girl. She's got her hair down, you know, and she works at a video store. Uh, lives in a, like a like an apartment, like a an upstairs apartment, you know. Uh, but she she's kind of just like average looking. I mean, she's pretty, 
but she has like that average look to her whereas her sister's looks is more like done up and like looks like the type that likes to party and like go out and that kind of thing you don't really see the sister all that much uh they go on a double date uh she's dating this guy named mike uh and she's kind of not into him and she, and considering her sister is like sort of like the partier type uh she kind of has that way about her where she's probably sleeping with every every boyfriend uh, alicia ends up having and so alicia kind of jumps to the conclusion that they're you know during the double date she thinks they were flirting with each other or and stuff like that or their sister's making a pass at him and it just automatically accuses them of, of, of messing around with her he denies it but it's already too late she's already got in her head that they're doing something she even starts having nightmares of uh of uh mike coming in and killing her so that her and her sister can have sex on their bed next to her bloody corpse uh, so, you know, they they got some pretty cool setups here. Uh, the video store is, like, really uh, has that mom-and-pop look. It's not a blockbuster or anything. It's just, like, a, I think they call it Video Valley or something like that. But while she's working there, this guy named uh, Franklin comes in, and he's kind of like a movie geek, and he's really bad at picking up the cashier, with you know, Alicia, and uh, he's just kind of like, oh, so... I bet you really like movies since you're looking at a, working at a movie store. So that's how he starts the conversation with her. They kind of like hit it off awkwardly. Uh, but then you find out you, they, they, they follow him for a little bit and you kind of, this is where it gets more stylistic because it's kind of like average, low budget, you know, the video's grainy, you know, and the sound's kind of muffled here and there. Uh, there's not a lot of music in the film, well, I take that back. There's music in the film, but I've seen, like, there's, like, scenes where there's just, like, no, nothing in the background. It's just really silent and, and a lot of dead air. Uh, but the scenes where the music is implemented, is it works really well, especially with this montage with Franklin where he kind of, you follow him for the night, and they're playing this badass music. Uh, it's, it's sort of like Talking Heads, like a harder rock version of Talking Heads. I'm not sure what it is, but I really liked it. We're seeing him like pick up girls at a bar, and then they go home with him. They have sex with him, and then he kills him, <laughs> and he wakes up next to a bloody corpse. Uh, and that's his routine. That's that's like his shtick. And you also see uh, segments with Carmine Copa Bianco. I just got it right that time. Uh, the guy from Psychos in Love, and he looks exactly the same. He's wearing the same little Hawaiian shirt and everything. And I'm thinking, well, maybe this is like. Maybe he's reprising the role in Psychos of Love of this character. Uh, I, I was thinking maybe he's a killer in this movie too. Because you don't really know where this movie's going. I think he actually come across Carmine before he come across Franklin, if I'm not mistaken. But it turns out he's actually a cop in this movie. Carmine is. And uh, he's like in this confessional type thing. Same thing they did in Psychos in Love where they kind of sitting in front of a camera like I'm doing now. And he's actually being interviewed by somebody, so I guess it's like a police department interview where they're talking to him about the case that he's working on, which is the murders that are happening that Franklin is committing and talking about, you know, just researching it, kind of talking about himself, too. Uh, but, you know, those segments don't really go anywhere except for just showing that somebody does care that people are getting killed. Uh, that's really the only purpose these segments serve, you know, it, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's mostly just interview segments with him. Uh, later on in the film, you actually get, like, they go out in the street, and they're in the car, and he dropped a sandwich off a roof. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you, you get to see him further investigate things live-action-wise, you know, getting in the muck uh, later on in the film. But they really don't do a whole lot, uh, other, other than being interviewed. Uh but yeah, she, so she she's fallen in love with this guy who is apparently a serial killer, and she she doesn't know it. Uh, and then she starts getting these weird phone calls. Uh, just she'll answer the phone, and there's just like noises, you know. She's like, well, "What the fuck?" And she'll like hang up the phone. And there's a lot of phone talking going on here, and it's it's wired phone. This was before wireless phone phones were around, so it's you know got the little pigtail cord and all that. Uh, I hate those. I I would never have issues in this movie because I personally dis dislike talking on the phone, and uh, 
it's just really time consuming and convenient. It's much more convenient to text. I'm so glad they invented, you know, texting and cell phones and that kind of stuff because otherwise I probably just wouldn't talk to anybody. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, she's starting to, you know, there's the storyline with the, with the killer, Franklin, uh, and of course her sister comes on to him and, uh, and then you also have the storyline thread with the phone calls that you think is sort of related to the other, but it's not. Uh, it's really weird. And then, and then the ending of the movie, after all this like unravels, you have like this weird scene. It's almost like a uh, repulsion or something where it's just the girl in a room freaking out, and uh, it's you know mainly over the phone calls and and some of about stuff that's happened in her life too, but. Uh, yeah, she's just becoming unraveled, and it's, it becomes very artsy, like, the way they, they shoot that part. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, just, t it just didn't seem to fit in with the rest of it. Uh, it's, just, it's such a weird movie. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's not bad or anything, but it's not necessarily good either. It's, it, it's definitely, uh, ambitious but amateurish, you know, uh, but it was, it was enjoyable, you know. It's worth watching. I don't know if I could recommend to buy it, but this is one of those uh, this is one of those Black Friday releases uh, from November. It's limited with a slip cover. It's limited to two thousand copies. Uh, so I'm not sure if they're still in stock as of posting this video, but they are in stock now as I record this video. Uh, could be a while before this gets out, but if it is available, I will definitely leave a link in the description uh, to where you can get this. And they might be releasing a non-limited version later on, so you can probably get your hands on one of those if you can't get the one with the fancy slip cover. Uh, but like I said, it, you, it's not nearly as good as Psychos in Love. If you if you didn't like like Psychos in Love, you probably won't like this one either. Uh, there's a lot of the same style, but this one's less comedic. Uh, Carmine's character, the police guys, they kind of add some lightness to the to the movie. It's not really like all that funny though. It's just slightly humorous. Uh, there, there's a nice bit of style in here. You can tell he's got talent, but uh, it's just a, a weird take on sort of like a slasher type of film. It's really like Horror House on Highway Five. It's just weird as hell and out there, but maybe not as trippy as Horror House was. Uh, but definitely just. He's got a weird style. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's just a strange style, and it's it's not bad, but it's not good either. It's just sort of average, low budget, you know, whatever artsy horror type of thing. And as far as the bonus material goes, uh, I didn't listen to the commentary track. Dissecting Disconnected uh, was the interview with Gorman, the director, G Gorman Bouchard, uh, and. Uh, he he kind of talks about how uh, you know he he made this uh, like I think during film school he was like one of the first guys from his class to make a, like a full feature film. Uh, the teacher didn't appreciate it because it was horror, and uh, yeah, he kind of he says he doesn't remember shooting this as much as he does uh, Psychos in Love, uh, but he, you know he kind of goes over what he can remember of of it and uh, kind of how he got the idea for it and all that. Uh, I was hoping it would shed some light on what the hell was this all about anyways, <laughs> but he didn't. Like, the the ending of the movie is, it, it's just kind of like, what? And, but I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's like, uh, it almost like forgot, you know, I can't, I can't really discuss it without spoiling it, but there's like something that happens at the very end, and I'm like, what is, what is going on here? What does this mean? But then I remembered, oh, that was, uh, okay. <laughs> I, like, tied it to something that happened previously. But, it, it, you know, I'd forgotten all about that, you know, by the time it gets to the end. And it's like, I was really confused. But, and even knowing that, I'm still sort of confused. as what the hell? Anyways, uh, so I was hoping this, this interview would shed some light on, on basically what the hell he was trying to say with this movie. But it doesn't really do that. Uh, getting Disconnected uh, interview with Carmine. Uh, he talks about he worked as like an assistant director on the film, also starred in the film as the uh, policeman, uh, detective or whatever, and uh, he just, yeah, basically just goes on about his experiences on the set. Both these interviews are like 10 minutes each or something like that. Uh, 
there's a director introduction to the film that you can watch, you know, before the film starts with the, the two of them. And uh, there's a short film called 20 Questions, which uh, Gorman, he was working with Vinegar Syndrome to release Psychos in Love and Disconnected. And while he was searching for the Disconnected film that he owns, he came across his uh, short film, 20 Questions. Uh, and he was like surprised. He thought this was a pretty much a dead film that he was never going to come across again. It was just lost to time. Uh, but but apparently it's not. He, he came across it. Vinegar Syndrome restored it for him. And uh, they put it as an extra on this Blu-ray here. And it's actually pretty interesting. It's uh, about an hour long. And he just has different people come in. Uh, it's I guess it's more like a documentary than like a movie. Like a, a fictional movie. But uh, he's got people come in of different walks of life. You know, he's got like a musician, uh, actor... Uh, some churchy lady, she's like a, book, a bookkeeper or something like that. Uh, oh, there's a model, all kinds of people, you know, just different occupations, different type types of lifestyles. But they they have like a layout of like a paper numbered one to twenty, and each each paper has like a question on it. And so it's just filming these people for an hour, you know, as they pick up different questions and answer them. Uh, so that was pretty interesting. The, the, and right off the bat, I was interested because there's this like heavy metal type of guy, or I, I'm assuming, and uh, he, he just has that look about him. And of course, I'm in the metal, so I was like, "Hey, that guy. Let's see what he has to say." And uh, he, they asked the first question that is asked on the on the movie is, "What is the saddest moment in your life?" And he says, "Growing up." And then he starts explaining why he says that he's like well you know when i was younger i had all these aspirations and i was going to be a big star and be a big you know musician or whatever and then you get older and realize you, you're not doing shit <laughs> and he, he works like in a stock room or something and he's just like well you know everything i ever dreamed of is not going to happen just because you know there's always so many slots you know for stardom and uh most people aren't going to make it, no matter how ambitious they are and talented they are. Most people just aren't. There's going to be working in a stock room. Uh, that's just the way things are. But uh, yeah, it was pretty sad, <laughs> and it kind of, you know, I kind of feel where he's coming from there. You know, I, I also had plenty of van, you know, dreams uh, and aspirations that never really. Oh, I, you know, I pursued them all. You know, I wanted to be in wrestling and music and movies and. I've done all three, but they haven't done all three to the success that I uh, wanted, you know, when I was a child. But it's kind of like, well, is it worth it to do, do them all <laughs> to some degree or, or do one all the way? I don't know. But either way, pretty bad, pretty depressing. But the, the movie in general was uh, pretty interesting to hear just all the different answers to different questions and, and who answers what, how. And that's also covered in the 20 questions introduction and Q&A. He does introduction to the film uh, in front of this theater audience and talks about how he rescued it from obscurity and all that and uh, how it came about. And then after the screening, they they answer questions from the audience. And uh, uh, pretty good, pretty interesting questions, pretty good insight on, on what the reasoning behind making this film is and... and how it relates, relates to today, because this was made like you know early '80s, and you know it's it's just it's interesting to see how I guess ideas have changed over the years. You know how people would answer those questions then, and how they might answer them now is a lot different. And some of them are the same. You know, it just depends on circumstances. Uh, but yeah, that was cool. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description, as I said. Of course, hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, I got some more Vinegar Syndrome stuff to open. And, uh, of course, I've already reviewed plenty of other ones. As well as films from Severance, Synapse, uh, Arrow, Criterion, Scream Factory. Uh, so, tour the channel. Check all that out. See you guys later.